Okay, so get this. We are diving into this world. Um, a world of magic and kingdoms, and there's a school for nobles. But but here's the thing, it's not your typical fairy tale. Nope. It's like it's like they took one of those Odom games, you know, where the heroine, <laughs> you know, has to win over all these guys. But uh here's the twist. The so called villainess is actually well, she's the one we can't help but root for. There's so much more beneath the surface. You're so right. It's like it's like someone took that classic autumn game and, and flipped the script. And what's what's really fascinating is how this episode makes us question who we're supposed to be cheering for. Like, who are the good guys here? I know, right? <laughs> like, take Alicia, for instance. She's supposed to be the villainess, but she's not really into, like, playing that part. Yeah. Or the way she hesitates to, like, use those those underhanded tactics even even when people are trying to like sabotage her it's like she has this inner compass that's telling her there's a better way yeah and that's that's what makes her so relatable she's not just a one dimensional you know bad girl she's she's trying to figure out who she is in this world in this world where everyone's like you're the villain it makes you wonder, are the real villains the ones who, who are so quick to judge her? Oh, yeah. totally. Okay. And speaking of villains, there's this whole thing about people around Liz. Yeah. Uh, they're making some really, really questionable decisions. <laughs> it's, just, it's plummeting. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, when you walk into a room and you forget why you went there, it's like that. But it's happening on a on a massive scale right and it's not just a few random things it's like a it's a pattern right yeah. it seems connected to liz connected to her powers you know as the holy one mm -hmm. it really makes you wonder is this this dumbing down thing is it intentional or is it some kind of accident like a side effect mm -hmm. and and if it is what does that mean for everyone else are they all just like pawns in her in mm -hmm. her holy game that's a little creepy so Okay, so we've got this this potential manipulation going on with Liz, and then we have Will, you know, the prince, the one who got a really raw deal. Oh, yeah. Blind, no power, yeah. framed by his own brother. Talk about a family drama, right? <laughs> but but what gets me is, is, is how the episode portrays him. You feel so bad for him. Like, he's clearly been wronged, but he's still... He's still holding on to hope. Absolutely. And and his story highlights a totally different type of manipulation, a political one. You see how power can be used to to corrupt and, and twist the truth, to mm. silence the people who, who threaten those in charge. And it makes you think about how often we see this in in the real world, right? Where those in power, they kind of manipulate the story to, to help themselves. That's true. Okay, so we've got we've got a potentially manipulative holy one, a villainess who might not be so villainous, and a prince who who wants justice after being betrayed. Yeah. But but let's not forget about Liz, right? I mean she's got this perfect image, this perfect reputation, but are there some some cracks starting to show? Oh totally. The episode drops some pretty big hints that that maybe things aren't what they seem with Liz. Like, take the wolf attack, for example. It feels a little too convenient, right? The timing was just too perfect to be a coincidence. And the more we learn about her, the more you start to question her, you know? Is she really as innocent as she seems? Or is she is she playing the long game here? Is she using her powers to make things happen and to get people to do what she wants? Hold on, my head is spinning a little. So we've got Liz who might be pulling the strings, and then we have Alicia who is trying to find her way through all of this. And and somewhere in this mix, there's Duke, who is totally into Alicia, even though she's not really giving him the time of day. It's complicated, to say the least. Very, and it's, it's that complexity that makes this so interesting. We're seeing these characters struggling with what they want, with their own sense of what's right and wrong, and, and all the pressure from, from a society is always telling them who they should be. Right. It's like they're all trapped in this in this web of expectations. And they're trying to break free. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we talked about the dumbing down thing and how it relates to manipulation and, and society. But but let's go back to Alicia for a minute. What's so interesting about her is is that she's not just reacting to all this craziness. She's trying to make sense of it, you know, to understand why things are happening and and find her place in all of it. Yeah, you're right. She's not just a pawn in this game. She's becoming a player. Mm -hmm. And and what's interesting is she's not doing it by by fitting into the villainous mold or the or the heroine mold either. She's doing it her own way by oh. questioning everything and everyone and and by refusing to be defined by the labels that everyone tries to stick on her. You know, it's it's funny because in a way that villainous label, it's almost like a, a shield for her. It yeah. lets her operate outside of the, the normal power structures. You know what I mean? Yeah. To challenge the way things are without being 
without being banned by the same rules as everyone else. That's a really good point. So she's using the, the villainous thing to her advantage to kind of turn things upside down and create space for herself to act. And it's working. She's attracting followers who are drawn to her strength and, and her intelligence, drawn to her willingness to like challenge the established order. You, you know, know what I mean? Yes. And and these followers, they're not just blindly following her like like we see with Liz. These are people who are looking for something different, something yeah. real, something yeah. that, that speaks to their own desire for a change. Right. And that's a really important difference because it, it highlights the different ways that, that power can show up and be used. Like Liz's power comes from control. From yeah. manipulating how people see things and, and how they feel. Right. But Alicia's power, it comes from being genuine from inspiring people by what she does and how strongly she sticks to her values. Oh, it's like the episode is showing us two different paths to power. Okay. One that's based on manipulation and the other that's based on on being true to yourself and inspiring others. Right. And it's asking us, which path would we choose? Which one is, is better in the long run? I love that. It's like a, a deep philosophical question hidden inside this fantasy story. Right. Speaking of philosophical questions, let's talk about Duke for a second. I mean, it's obviously crazy about Alicia, but she's not... She's not giving him what he wants. It's like she sees right through his attempts to control her, and she's not playing that game. It's so refreshing, right, to see a female character who isn't just head over heels for the first guy who gives her attention. Like, Alicia is smart, she's independent, and she's not afraid to set boundaries. And and what's interesting is, is that Duke seems to be both attracted to and frustrated by her strength. It's like It's like he's used to women who just do what he wants, who fit into his idea of how they should be. And, and Alicia's totally throwing him off because she's not playing by his rules. She's she's challenging him, pushing him outside his comfort zone, making him question his own ideas about power and relationships. And, you know, that kind of challenge can be really attractive. Like, she's, she's waking up something inside him that he didn't even know was there. Ooh, that's a good point. So their relationship is like a mini version of the, the bigger themes of the episode, right? Yeah. The clash between wanting to control everything and wanting to be free between manipulation and, and being real and and how challenging our beliefs can help us grow. Exactly. It's fascinating to watch them, you know, because you can see how they're both affecting each other, pushing each other to change and, and to become more aware of why they do the things they do. Okay, so we've got this complicated relationship between Alicia and Duke. We've got Liz's powers getting stronger and we've got that, that dumbing down effect spreading like a virus. But, but where does Will fit into all of this? Well, he's kind of on the sidelines right now, but his presence is definitely felt. Like, he's a reminder of, of the injustice that's happened, of the manipulation that's taken place, and, and of the possibility for things to change. He's like a, a symbol of hope in this world that's getting darker and more twisted. Yes. And, and even after everything he's been through, he hasn't given up. He's still fighting for what's right, still holding on to his beliefs, and still believing that a better world is possible. And that, that kind of resilience is really inspiring. It is. And it makes you wonder, what will he do in all of this? Will he be the one to, to bring about change? Will he expose the truth about Liz? Will he team up with Alicia to, to challenge everything? Those are great questions. And, and the episode kind of hints that, that a reunion between Will and Alicia might be coming. Yeah. I mean, they're in the same city now, and, and they've both been victims of... of manipulation and betrayal imagine the conversations they could have right the the things they could learn from each other the plans they could make together oh that would be epic and so satisfying to see them both take back their power expose the truth and and create a more just world yes and their their shared experiences could create a really strong bond between them they could support each other understand each other and and maybe even you know a little romance maybe maybe just a little but who wouldn't root for those two They've been through so much, they deserve some happiness. They do. But you know what else they deserve? Justice. And that brings us back to the, the wolf attack. The episode really focuses on, on how suspicious the timing of that whole event was. And it's clear that something's not right. It's like the writers are like challenging us to put on our detective hats <laughs> to, to figure out the clues. I know. And the more you think about it, the more questions you have. Like, why would a, a giant wolf from another country just suddenly show up at the exact moment Liz needed something to, to make her look good? Right. And why didn't any of the kingdom's advisors, you know, the people who were supposed to be protecting everyone, know about this threat? It's almost like someone planned the whole thing. Right. And, and let's be real, all signs point to Liz. But how does she do it? 
Did she did she call the wolf somehow? Right. Did she manipulate things behind the scenes to make sure it would attack? Or or is there something else going on that we haven't even thought of yet? Those are great questions, and and I think the episode is leaving them unanswered on purpose, just to keep us guessing, to build suspense. Well, it's working. I need to know what happens next, but yeah. but before we get too caught up in all the theories, I think it's time to, to step back and look at the bigger picture. What are the, the main themes the episode is exploring? and and how do they connect to our own lives? That's a great question. And and I think there are a few themes that really stand out. One is is the nature of power, you know, yeah. how it can be used for good or for evil. We see this with Liz and how she manipulates people, with Will and his search for justice, and with Alicia and how she refuses to do what's expected of her. Yeah, yeah. And another theme is how important it is to think critically, to question the stories we're told. The episode is always challenging us to to look deeper, to be skeptical. Absolutely. And I think a third theme is, is about being true to yourself, even when it's hard. We see that with Alicia and how she won't be the villainous, with Will and how he stays true to his beliefs, and even with Duke and his struggle to, to break free from, from how he was raised. It's amazing how this episode manages to, to pack so much meaning into such a fun story. It's like, it's like a Trojan horse of wisdom sneaking in these deep ideas under the cover of this fantasy adventure. I couldn't agree more. And, and that's what makes it so effective. It's not preachy. It's not, it's not talking down to you. It's just a really engaging story that happens to be full of, of things that make you think. Exactly. And it's also just fun to watch. I mean, who doesn't love a good story with magic and romance? and political drama. It's definitely a winning combination. And speaking of winning combinations, I have a feeling that the next episode is going to be wild. I can't wait to see how all of these storylines come together, how the characters change, and what, what new surprises the writers have in store for us. I'm right there with you, and I have a feeling that we're just, we're just getting started. There's still so much to figure out, so many mysteries, so many possibilities. Okay, okay, before we, we get too carried away, let's let's pause for a second and, and think about what we've learned. We talked about manipulation, power, thinking critically, and, and being true to yourself. But but what does it all mean? What are the, the key takeaways that we can that we can use in our own lives? That's a that's a great question. And and I think it's up to each person listening to figure out what they take away from it. But I, I would say that one important takeaway is that we should be careful about stories that that make complicated things seem simple or or that act like they're the only truth. Yes, and we should be willing to to question those stories, to look for different points of view, and to be open to the idea that, that we might be wrong. Exactly. Another takeaway is that power can show up in many different ways and that, that real power comes from being authentic, from sticking to your values and, and inspiring others by what you do, not by trying to control them. I love that. And, and I think a third takeaway is that even when things are hard, even when things seem hopeless, it's important to keep hoping, to keep fighting for what's right, and to believe that a better world is possible. That's beautifully said. And you know, I think this episode also reminds us that that it's okay to be a little messy, a little imperfect, and a little confused. Like, life is complicated. There aren't always easy answers. That's so true. And and sometimes the most important thing is to, to just keep asking questions, keep learning, keep growing. And, and keep trying to be our best selves, even if even if we don't always know what that looks like. Well said. And, and I think this episode has given us a lot to think about, a lot to talk about, but, but I'm afraid we have to pause our deep dive here for now. But don't worry, we'll be back soon with the, the final part of our analysis. We'll, we'll dig even deeper into the mysteries of this story and, and explore even more thought-provoking themes. So stay tuned and be sure to join us for, for the exciting conclusion of our deep dive into this incredible episode. You know, it's like the episode is holding a mirror up to us in a way. Oh yeah. We're constantly bombarded with information and different stories all competing for our attention. Right. And it can be hard to sift through it all. It really can. And figure out what's real and what's not. It's so true. This episode reminds us that it's important to step outside our comfort zones, you know? Yeah. Challenge our assumptions and be open to being wrong. You're so right. It's like we're all living in our own little bubbles, surrounded by people who agree with us. Exactly. And it's easy to forget that there are other perspectives out there. It is. Okay, so we've talked about that dumbing down effect and how it connects to manipulation and societal trends. But let's get back to Alicia for a minute. Okay. What I find so compelling about her is she's not just reacting to the chaos around her. She's actively trying to make sense of it all. You're right. To understand the forces at play and to find her own place in this world. You're right. She's not just a pawn in this game. No. She's becoming a player. And what's interesting is she's not doing it by 
conforming to the expectations of a villainess or a heroine. Right. She's doing it on her own terms by questioning everything and everyone and by refusing to be defined by those labels that others try to put on her. You know, it's funny because in a way, her villainous label is almost like a shield. Oh, I so. It allows her to operate outside of the traditional power structures, mm -hmm. you know, right. to challenge the status quo without being bound by the same rules as everyone else. That's a really insightful observation. Thanks. It's like she's using the villainous persona to her advantage to subvert expectations and create her own space for agency. Yeah. And it's working because she's attracting followers who are drawn to her strength, mm -hmm. her intelligence, and her willingness to challenge the established order. Yes, and these followers aren't the mindless sheep that we see flocking to Liz. Yep. They're people who are looking for something different, something real, something mm -hmm. that resonates with their own desire for change. Right, and that's a really important distinction because it highlights the different ways that power can be manifested and wielded. Oh yeah. Liz's power is based on control, on manipulating people's perceptions and emotions. Okay. But Alicia's power is based on authenticity, on inspiring people through her actions and her unwavering commitment to her own values. It's like the episode is showing us two different paths to power. Totally. One based on manipulation and the other based on inspiration. Yeah. And it's asking us to consider which path we would choose, which path is more sustainable, and which path ultimately leads to a better outcome. It's like a philosophical thought experiment disguised as an entertaining fantasy story. Exactly. Speaking of philosophical thought experiments, yeah. let's talk about Duke for a moment. Okay. He's clearly smitten with Alicia, but she's not exactly giving him the attention he craves. Yeah. It's like she sees right through his attempts to control her. I think you're right. And she's not having any of it. It's really refreshing to see a female character who isn't falling head over heels for the first guy who shows her attention. I know. Elisa is discerning. She's independent and she's not afraid to set boundaries. And what's interesting is that Duke seems to be both attracted to and frustrated by her strength. It's like he's used to women who play by the rules who conform to his expectations. Right. And Alicia's throwing him for a loop because she's not playing that game. Yeah. She's challenging him, pushing him outside of his comfort zone and forcing him to confront his own assumptions about power and relationships. And you know, that kind of challenge can be incredibly attractive. Oh, really? It's like she's awakening something in him, something that he didn't even know was there. Ooh, that's a good point. Yeah. It's like their relationship is a microcosm of the larger themes of the episode. Totally. The clash between control and freedom, between manipulation and authenticity. Yeah. And the potential for personal growth that can arise from challenging our own beliefs. Exactly, and it's fascinating to watch their dynamic unfold because you can see how they're both influencing each other, pushing each other to evolve and to become more aware of their own motivations and desires. Okay, so we've got this complex relationship dynamic between Alicia and Duke. We've got Liz's power growing stronger and we've got the dumbing down effect spreading like a virus. Yeah. But what about Will? Where does he fit into all of this? Well, he's kind of on the periphery at the moment, but his presence looms large. In what way? He's a reminder of the injustice that has been perpetrated, of the manipulation that has taken place, and of the potential for things to change. Mm. He's like a symbol of hope, a beacon of light in this increasingly dark and twisted world. Yes, and even though he's been through so much, he hasn't given up. I know. He's still fighting for justice still holding on to his ideals and still believing that a better world is possible. And you know, that that kind of resilience is incredibly inspiring. It definitely is. And it makes you wonder what role will he play in the unfolding drama? Yeah. Will he be a catalyst for change? Will he expose the truth about Liz's manipulations? Will he team up with Alicia to challenge the established order? Ooh, those are great questions. And the episode definitely drops some hints that a reunion between Will and Alicia might be in the cards. Really? They're both in the same city now, and they've both been victims of manipulation and betrayal. Mm. Imagine the conversations they could have, the insights they could share, the strategies they could devise together. It would be epic, and it would be so satisfying to see them both find a way to reclaim their power, to expose the truth, and to bring about a more just and equitable world. Yes, and you know, their shared experiences could also create a really powerful bond between them. Yeah. They could offer each other support, understanding, and maybe even a little bit of romance. Ah. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. You're already shipping them, aren't you? Maybe just a little, but hey, who wouldn't root for these two? 
They've both been through so much and they deserve a little happiness. But you know what else? They deserve justice. And that brings us back to the wolf attack incident. Okay. The episode really digs into the suspicious timing of that whole event, and it's clear that something fishy is going on. It's like <laughs> the writers are daring us to put on our detective hats and try to piece together the clues. And the more you think about it, the more questions you have. Such as? Why would a giant wolf from another country suddenly appear at the exact moment when Liz needed a way to boost her reputation. Right. And why were none of the kingdom's wise advisors who were supposed to be protecting the realm aware of the threat? It's like someone orchestrated the whole thing. And let's be honest, all signs point to Liz, but the question is, how did she do it? Did she somehow summon the wolf? Did she manipulate events behind the scenes to ensure that it would attack? Or is there something else going on that we haven't even considered yet? It's a real mystery. Those are excellent questions. And I think the episode is intentionally leaving them unanswered for now, just to keep us guessing and to add to the suspense. It's working because I'm totally hooked. I need to know what happens next, and I need to know now. But before we get too carried away with speculation, I think it's time to take a step back and consider the bigger picture. What are the overarching themes that the episode is exploring, and how do they relate to our own lives? That's a great question, and I think there are several themes that stand out. One is the nature of power, and how it can be used for both good and evil. We see this in Liz's manipulative tactics in Will's quest for justice and in Alicia's defiance of the expectations placed upon her. Okay, so we're back and ready to, to wrap things up with this episode. We've, we've covered a lot, manipulation, power dynamics, the whole dumbing down thing, but mm. I feel like there's still so much to unpack. Yeah, you're right. There's always more to, to discover, especially with a story that throws so many twists and turns at us. But before we, we go down that rabbit hole, I want to bring up something we talked about before. The idea that this isn't just a, a simple good versus evil kind of story. It's it's way more complicated than that. Right. It's like everyone's in this gray area making choices based on, on what they think is right. And sometimes those choices have, have consequences they didn't expect. It really reflects real life, doesn't it? I mean, we tend to think in terms of heroes and villains, but but the truth is most people are somewhere in between. And, and understanding that is, is really important, especially when it comes to, to how power works. Okay, so let's talk about power. We've seen how Liz uses it, you know, through manipulation, through this whole Holy One image. Yeah. But then there's Alicia, who seems to be gaining power in a completely different way. She's not manipulating people. She's not forcing them to do anything. She's just being herself. And that's somehow drawing people to her. It's the power of authenticity and people really underestimate it. Think about it, you're more likely to trust someone who's genuine, right? Someone who, who owns their flaws, who's not afraid to, to show some vulnerability. That's so true. It's like when you see a politician or a celebrity who's trying so hard to be perfect, it just makes you suspicious, right? Yeah. But when someone is, is real, when they show you who they are, it creates a connection. You start to trust them. Exactly, and and I think that's a big part of why Alicia is so interesting. She's not afraid to challenge the way things are, to speak her mind, to be herself, even if it means going against the crowd. And and that kind of courage, it rubs off on people. It makes them want to do the same. And, and isn't that what real leadership is about? Inspiring people to be their best, to think for themselves, to fight injustice and make the world a better place. You got it. It's not about controlling people. It's about giving them the power to to be themselves. So we've got Liz, who represents this, this manipulative, controlling kind of power. And we've got Alicia, who represents this more authentic, empowering kind of power. And, and somewhere in the middle, we've got Duke, who seems to be pulled between these two forces. Yeah, he's he's drawn to Alicia's authenticity, but he's also battling with his own ingrained beliefs about, about power and control. He's used to getting what he wants, and he doesn't know how to, to deal with someone who, who doesn't just, you know, fall at his feet. Yeah, it's almost like he's learning a new way of relating to people, a way that's built on respect and equality and genuine connection instead of, of dominance and control. And that's a journey a lot of people need to take, especially those who, who grew up with privilege. Unlearning those patterns of dominance and control, it's hard, but it's so important for building healthy relationships and a more just world. You know, it's fascinating how the episode uses these characters to, to look at all these different sides of power. It's not just about who has the most power, it's about how they decide to use it and how it affects everyone around them. And it's about realizing that power isn't always out in the open or obvious. Sometimes the people with the most power are the ones who can influence others in more subtle ways 
through manipulation, through stories, through how they shape people's perceptions. Which brings us back to that dumbing down effect. It's such a clever way to show how easily people can be manipulated, you know, yeah. how easily they can be swayed by by charismatic leaders or or by stories, especially stories that play on their fears and insecurities. Mm. It's like it's a warning about how important it is to think critically, to question everything, to not just believe what we're told, because in a world where information is everywhere, it's so easy to be misled, to fall for propaganda or to to just go along with what everyone else is thinking. So it's like we all need to become our own fact checkers, our own BS detectors. Exactly, and that starts with being aware of, of our own biases, our own weaknesses, and, and how our emotions can be used to manipulate us. Okay, so we've talked about power, manipulation, critical thinking, and authenticity. But there's one more thing I wanna to touch on before we finish up, hope. Ah, uh, yes. Even with all the darkness and, and mystery, there's this little spark of hope that runs through the whole episode. It's there in, in how Alicia defies expectations and how Will keeps going, and even in how Duke might change for the better. Yeah, like the episode's reminding us that even when things are rough, even when things seem hopeless, there's always a chance for things to change, for people to redeem themselves for a better future. And that hope, that's what keeps us going, right? Yep. It's what makes us want to fight for justice, to challenge the way things are, and to believe that a better world is possible. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm left with this, this mix of caution and optimism. Caution, because the episode shows us how easily we can be tricked and how important it is to think for ourselves. But optimism, because it also shows us the power of being real the chance for people to grow and and the fact that hope never really dies. That's a great way to put it. And, and I think that's a perfect place to end things. This episode has given us so much to think about, to talk about and to really reflect on. And I have a feeling we'll be coming back to these ideas as the story continues. Well, listeners, we hope you enjoyed this deep dive as much as we did. We explored some pretty complex stuff, but but we had some fun along the way. And, and we hope that this conversation has encouraged you to, to think critically, to question everything, and to never let go of hope. Until next time, keep diving.